Yes, yes, greetings, what's up? This is Farrakhan, Big Khan, Big Farrakhan of Nobi, Nobi Show, Nation of Black Entrepreneurs, and I am the heart of Brooklyn, USA, downtown Brooklyn, 647 Folsom Street, you know what I'm saying? So definitely, I would like to thank those for supporting me, um, definitely um, check out Black Billionaires on Nobi, Black Billionaires from Oprah. All the way down to the heart of Africa. The I want to share with the list of black billionaires. It's a gather of online research. Definitely short, simple. 28 minutes, baby. Some things you didn't know about black billionaires doing it. Um, you'd be surprised on how they did it. So it's definitely educational, but yet fun filled activities. Um, also, throw a little bit of baking black and a little bit of facts for entrepreneurs. Um, here and there, so I definitely hope you definitely will enjoy. If you have any questions, hit me up. Um, email me at nation of b, nation of b b e at gmail dot com, or just find me on the, your local listeners on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Farrah Connors is the name. Peace and blessings. The clock is ticking. I gotta show that rock away that New Year's gift. The clock is ticking. But um, brothers and sisters, make it happen. I thank you very much for the opportunity. All right, so definitely check out my series on break, and also it's going to be on Eminem as well. Black Billionaires. Also MLK. Um, check out the list. I have a whole whole list of different um, shows. So check me out. I'm on YouTube as well. Peace and blessings. She's one of Nigeria's most successful businesswomen, accomplished in many fields. Starting out in the 70s as a local secretary, by the 80s she leaped to Fashion Designer of the Year. I myself as a little girl had always been quite fashion conscious. In the 90s she struck it rich in the oil business. To the glory of God, we actually struck oil in commercial quantity. Now she gives back as author and philanthropist, helping Nigeria's widows and orphans. We try our best to bring hope back into their lives. This week on African Voices, Palonjo Alakija opens the pages of her autobiography. Through her life experiences and challenges, she shares the secrets to her success. So I've always believed that anything worth doing at all is worth doing well. Alakija is a Nigerian billionaire. She travels frequently back and forth from her home in Lagos, Nigeria to her homes in London. She's with her publishers in her apartment block in Knightsbridge, an exclusive and upscale district in central London. They're looking over her latest book. I am a very proud Nigerian. I have traveled wide and far. I've traveled the world over. I've been traveling since the age of seven. Now in her 60s, Falonjo Alakija is one of Nigeria's influential women. She recently finished an autobiography called Growing with a Hand That Gives the Rose. Inside, she shares stories of her beginnings in the corporate world. I started off as a secretary because that was um, the, the, the career path that my father made me get into. It wasn't my choice. So I started off... Um, in the bank as its secretary to the managing director. I was very comfortable doing what I was doing. I had a good eye for the stationery and uh, creating the logo of the bank. Alakija says her creativity helped her move along the corporate ladder quickly. From executive secretary, she became the first head of corporate affairs at IMB, Nigeria's international merchant bank. From when I started working, uh, at um, International Merchant Bank. 
um, I knew all along from inside of me um, that I, at some point in my life that I wanted to get into business. Two years later, she moved into a financial position in the Treasury Department. It wasn't long after she started thinking about creating her own business. Treasury Department. And I saw that more of a, of a business-related uh, sector of the bank where I could trade with the, with the bank's money and uh, make money for the bank. I, I felt like uh, being a natural in business. So um, I was able to juggle that very well. But when it got to the stage where I found that um, people were being hired, those who are who have university degrees and they were being placed in positions above me. I didn't like that. I felt it was time to move on and uh, set up my own business. And I started thinking about what to do, what kind of business that I would do that I would feel comfortable doing. And it was a time when Nigerians were beginning to look inwards uh, and fashion was beginning to pick up in Nigeria and people were being very proud of wearing African fashion, Nigerian fashion, um, Nigerian clothing. I felt that you know it was the right time to go into um, studying the art of fashion design. So that was when I decided that it was time to move and to actually go and learn fashion design because I've always believed that Anything worth doing at all is worth doing well. I felt that um, I shouldn't just hire staff and get them to get on with it. You know, I felt that I needed to know a lot more about it and, and do it professionally and dot I's and cross T's. So I decided to resign from the bank and uh, go back to England to study fashion design and come back to set up my own business in that line. In 1985, Alakija made the switch from finance to fashion. After studying in London for a year, she returned to Nigeria to make her debut as a designer. She rented a three-bedroom apartment in a popular district of Lagos and called her fashion label Supreme Stitches. It was an immediate success. By the end of her first year, Alakija won a prestigious national award, Fashion Designer of the Year. Supreme Stitches became a household brand in Nigeria and Falonjo Alakija, a big name in the industry. I myself as a little girl had always been quite fashion conscious. Uh, I love clothes. I love beautiful things and beautiful people around me. I also knew that I had creative abilities and uh, because I had um, the, the, the talents to go with it. So I just felt that um, I needed to choose something that I would be comfortable doing, something that I would uh, enjoy doing, and something that would be lucrative at the same time. She credits family for her fashion sense and success. When we went on holidays, I would always go and help my mum in her store. Uh, she used to sell textiles. Mine was to market what she was selling, and it gave me insight into colors and textures of fabrics and uh, how to make a sale. So I, I learned a lot with fabrics and colors and then um, I would go back to school. So I think that helped me. Alakija was also exposed to Western cultures as a child. We lived there for four years. We mixed with the uh, English girls. Uh, imbibed a lot of uh, British values and I remember that uh, we didn't look forward to going to the dining room because we weren't eating Nigerian food. Her beginning chapters next. The status of women in Africa today is still a major concern. And many experience inequalities in their social, political, economic and cultural lives. 
In Nigeria, widowed women can face untold hardships as a result of traditional customs. Apart from mourning their dead husbands, some are considered unclean and impure. If a widow has no male adult children, she can lose everything. The husband's family inherits his property. And in some cases, in-laws do not provide the widow with economic support, especially if she does not accept becoming an additional wife to one of her husband's brothers. Falonjo Alakija is working hard to change these stigmas women are subjected to in Nigeria. At the age of 40, she became a religious person and found passion in caring for the underprivileged. She soon established the Rose of Sharon Foundation. Jesus is the Rose of Sharon. When he said in the Bible, I'm the Rose of Sharon, I'm the Lily of the Valley. When you give someone a rose, you're giving it to them out of love. You're stretching out your hand. Um, wanting to grow a relationship and God has a relationship with every one of his creations regardless of whatever your religion is we all belong to him the foundation is a non-governmental organization it's not non-profit making it it, it helps to uh, get widows widows children and orphans back on their feet because we found out um, that widows are like a stigma, in, you know, in the society. They they feel as if they have been um, that society hasn't been kind to them. Um, once they lose their husbands, um, society tends to turn their backs on them. So when they lose their husbands, they, they don't know where to turn. And it's like they go cap in hand, knocking on doors and, um, you know, trying to put meals on their tables. So life becomes extremely more difficult than it used to be when their husbands are alive. The Rose of Sharon Foundation began in 2008. Elakija says her Fashion African Connection magazine helped finance the launch. A full-color 208-page magazine, the first of its kind in Nigeria. It was also Elakija's parting gift to the fashion world. Since then, she has dedicated her time to supporting widows and orphans, using her financial background by providing interest-free loans and scholarships. We try our best to bring hope back into their lives. Uh, we basically uh, give them microcredits uh, to help them to trade. And the microcredits that we give them, uh, we don't charge them any interest at all. We send uh, some of their children to school, um, giving them scholarships from whichever level that we find the, their children. Now we're, we're, we're catering to the needs of uh, widows and orphans in uh, four different states in Nigeria. We intend to go nationwide. A lot of them like to um, trade in selling provisions um, because they find that easier. Uh, because those provisions, I mean, milk and sugar and you know stuff like that don't go bad. Some of them learn different uh, vocations, hairdressing, beading, catering. The foundation, um, you know, uh, has realized that it would be ideal for us to set up schools uh, for, 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 the, for their children. Um, we want to start with Lagos State by having our own headquarters. That's, uh, that's the next thing that we're trying to do. One of the ideas that we have uh, for the near future is to be able to um, set up projects in every state where the widows themselves can actually um, work on farms and uh, be involved in agriculture, where they can actually live on those farms and then set up schools in um, either, you know, within the same farmland or nearby the farms where their children can go to school within walking distances and where, you know, they, then, they and, their fam and, and their children can live and, you know, you know and... Uh, grow fruits and vegetables and you know sell them you know so that it would you know begin to build their confidence a bit more
Alakija is confident in her efforts and believes she can destigmatize the role of widows in her home country. She's optimistic for Nigeria. It's a land of opportunities. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. Yes, it has its uh, challenges. Uh, it has its uh, faults. But Rome wasn't built in a day. And um, we all have to um, come together, those who live in it and those who are living abroad, and uh, come together to, to build our nation. Nigeria has made a lot of progress and it can only get better. We can, you know, we'll have to continue to dialogue and criticize ourselves and make it a better place to live in. Once a major shaker in Nigeria's fashion industry, now a dedicated Christian, designing new paths for women and children in need. Elakija hopes her latest book, her autobiography, will spread her efforts for future change. I titled Growing with the Hand That Gives the Rose. The hand that gives the rose, I refer to as God, told about, uh, as much about my life um, as, as, I, as I could, um, to encourage others to uh, get to where they should be, where they want to be. It's better to try to always ask God first rather than asking friends. You, you can find that um, a friend of yours is doing very well in a particular industry. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's for you. God has something in store for each and every one of us. Our destinies are different. So you have to find out what, where he's leading you, where he wants you to be. Um, God has a plan for each and every one of us. Uh, so we have to find out where we're supposed to key into in his will for our lives. Always take every major step okay. to the Lord in prayer mm. before I do it. Okay. And he does talk to me in my dream. It's only God who could have brought an executive secretary into the business, the serious business of oil exploration and production. It's only God who could have brought me from a Muslim background, a Muslim family, to become a born-again Christian. It's only God who could have singled me out from amongst 52 children of my father. Yes, for a divine assignment that he, has, that he has for my life. It's only God who could have given me a husband in a marriage that's been going on, waxing strong for 38 years now. It's only God who could have given us grace to raise four sons and two grandchildren who are awesome. It's only God who could have blessed me first before calling me into ministry. I'm not done yet. Right, he is, as I said, a God of excellence. He expects us to do things in excellent fashion. So we have to do our homework. We have to research. Mm -hmm. We can't fold our arms and say, well, they said there's a God mm -hmm. and he's supposed to uh, do things for us. And uh, we just expect that the miracles will just come, you know, flowing down. That's not the way it works. I'm going to be able to achieve and I'm, am I going to be able to do this is this something that I'm going to love doing mm -hmm. because every time that we get up to go to work in the morning mm -hmm. we 
have to en we have to look forward to going to work, mm -hmm. not grumbling before we go to work. Mm -hmm. If it's not your line of business or the kind of thing that you should you would enjoy doing, mm -hmm. then you're in the wrong line of business. Okay. Yeah. The advice that I would have for, have for them, even before they go into it at all, is to be sure that they're going to enjoy what they've chosen as a career. Because it can be quite intimidating, it can be very, very challenging. And if they're not enjoying what they're doing, fashion, the fashion industry is certainly not for them. Because the passion is what is going to keep them going, regardless of whatever they have to face as they go along and as they go up those steps. But um, it's a very rewarding uh, profession. My husband was solidly behind me. There were many times that I would go back home crying and he would say, oh, enough of that. After all, we're not starving. After all, we are comfortable. So why cry? I had his support financially. I had his support morally. I had his full backing. But how could I have had that? I give glory to God that I had a, I had a, 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 a settled home. I had a, a balanced relationship with my husband and with my children. And that could help me to dare to dare. Wow. I want to, I'm, I'm not one to take no for an answer because I love to take challenges and, you know, go the extra mile and try to see to its, to its logical conclusion. And last time I went to see the minister, before that minister was changed, he then said to me that, okay, you've come with all these ideas, but you know what this government wants? This government wants Nigerians to be involved in Nigeria's exploration and production. That so far up till then, that, the Niger that it has been multinationals that had been um, taking advantage. Re reaping the benefits. That had been taking advantage of, 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 our in of the oil industry in Nigeria. So they want Nigerians to begin to do that. So I felt, okay, I guess this is saying, this is not for, your, for, for the likes of you. Enough. There's no point coming back. I went back with drooped shoulders. But then because I'm not, one to, I'm, I'm not one to take no for an answer, because I love to take challenges and, you know, go the extra mile and try to see to its, to its logical conclusion. So it seemed as if that door was shut again. So three but times. Three that was times. three times. Yes. I didn't give up. I knew that this is a door that I, I, I should find a way to get something out of it. And it seemed as if that door was shut. But someone else would have given up because that was what she was told to go and do and there was nothing coming out of it. They would have walked away. I chose not to walk away. I chose to go back. I can call it an opportunity that I took and didn't just walk over or didn't ignore. A friend had contacted me and uh, uh, it said that some associates of hers wanted to buy, buy crude oil. And she was wondering whether I might be able to be of help to get them to be able to purchase the crude oil. I went knocking on a few doors uh, I eventually got uh, an appointment with the Minister of Petroleum. I'm hardworking. I'm very, very hardworking, extremely hardworking. In fact, I'd be sick if I don't work. And if I married a husband who didn't allow me to work, we would have been divorced long ago. That's the truth. Seriously. I'm an... You create lucky by going the extra mile especially women. It's easy for the men to just do something effortlessly and, you know, they get recognition for it. But for women to be able to get recognized, you have to put in triple effort into what the men are putting in. It's only then that you get noticed. 
just because there are so many odds against women, just because the world believes that the woman is supposed to be in the kitchen. I'm a perfectionist. I'm creative and I'm innovative. Homework and your research, ask questions, talk to people who have, um, who have been in that kind of business and before succeeded. and who are still in it mm -hmm. and who have succeeded in it. Go and, you know, uh, tap their brains. Okay. Talk to them. Get some, you know, learning curves from yeah, them. Yeah. I mean, they have, maybe they were the first few that were in that line of business, maybe in that country. Mm -hmm. So they've gone through several challenges mm -hmm. and they, they, they've learned a few things mm -hmm. going down that road. Yeah. So you can cut off some of that mm -hmm. by asking them and talking to them. And um, I believe that, you know, they're always willing to, to, to give tips. I'm inquisitive. I've always had an inquisitive mind ever since I've known myself. <laughs>